All right, time to go teach. Hello and welcome to this episode of Tutor Tutors, where we are starting a new unit. This one is on genetics, and today we are going to be looking at the topic of reproduction and inheritance. So, our learning targets for today are, first, we're going to compare asexual versus sexual reproduction, which are the two different ways that organisms can reproduce. Next, we're going to explain the advantages and disadvantages of each style of reproduction. And lastly, we are going to introduce vocabulary that we are going to use. Genetics is full of very specific vocabulary, which you have to understand to fully grasp what is going on. So we're going to go over a few different words and terms just so that way as we progress, you understand what it is that we're talking about. Reproduction, well, as we said, we have these two different types, asexual and sexual reproduction. And asexual reproduction means that you only have one parent, and that means that your offspring is also going to be genetically identical to that single parent. Since it is only one parent that is donating the genes, that means that the offspring only is gonna get those genes. For sexual reproduction, you have two parents, and the offspring is going to have a combination of genes that it got from each parent. Asexual reproduction does have some benefits. The benefits are, first off, it can be fast. It can be extremely fast. When bacteria reproduce, they can reproduce in approximately 20 minutes, making offspring. That is extremely quick. And it only requires one parent which means if an organism happens to find itself alone or in a very, very, very small population, that is not a problem for it to reproduce. The disadvantages though, are that the offspring are genetically identical to the parents. This is a disadvantage because if some factor comes into play where the population would be negatively impacted, the entire population would be impacted in the exact same way and that could cause that population to go extinct, which is obviously not good for the survival of the organisms, which is what reproduction is all about. For sexual reproduction though, the benefit is that the offspring are going to be genetically unique. The offspring isn't going to be exactly like either parent, it's going to be a combination of both of the parent's genes. And because the offspring is a combination of both of the parent's genes, that variability means it's much harder for a single factor to wipe out a population. The disadvantage though is it's typically slower than asexual reproduction and you do require two different parents for this process. For sexual reproduction to work though, it can't use a typical body cell or something called a somatic cell. It requires a specialized cell and those specialized cells are called gametes. That would be the egg and the sperm. They are gametes and they are very special to allow for sexual reproduction to occur. The reason why that we need these gametes, the ovum, which is the egg, and the sperm, is because they are haploid. And we'll go over what that means in a little bit. And they're formed through this process of meiosis, and they fuse together to actually form a zygote through the process of fertilization. A zygote is the first cell for the new offspring. That is formed from the fusing of the egg and the sperm. The reason why we need gametes though is because of this. If we only used mitosis, well, we have a set of chromosomes from each parent, a set of chromosomes from the male parent and a set of chromosomes from the female parent. That's why we have a two N right here. It's two for each type of chromosome. That means that we have these pairs of chromosomes. And if we were to take these two N cells and they were to reproduce through mitosis, well, then they would continuously stay as two N because mitosis makes an exact copy of the parent cell. If we were to take a 2N sperm and have it fuse with a 2N egg, we would end up with, 
now, four of each type of chromosome. And that would be a problem because if this organism then continued and it reproduced, then its offspring would have eight of each type of chromosome and then 16 of each type of chromosome. And that can't last. Our nucleus is only so large. It can only fit so much DNA. So that means that we have to reduce the number of chromosomes that would be going into the zygote from each parent. So we have to take our cell, which has a pair of chromosomes in it, and we have to then have that number. So now we have not a pair of each chromosome, but only one of each chromosome. And now if the sperm has only one of each chromosome and the egg has only one of each chromosome and they fuse together, we end up with a pair of chromosomes, which is just like what the parents had in their cells originally. This can now, as a zygote, form the new offspring, maintaining just the pairs of chromosomes. And then when it has to reproduce, it will form the gametes, which again will have the number of chromosomes. So that way we have that stability of the number of chromosomes that will fit in our nucleus. Some vocab. Again, chromosomes. What are they? Well, remember that our chromosomes are just a strand of DNA and protein, and that is where our genetic information is stored along these chromosomes. The gene is a sequence of DNA that is going to control for a specific trait. Basically, it controls for a polypeptide. Going back a little bit, you probably remember transcription and then translation. The section of DNA that is transcribed that is a gene. Chromosomes are made up of genes. Alleles are specific variations of each gene. The way that you make your proteins and the way that I make my proteins might be slightly different because we might have a slightly different genetic code. We have the same genes, but we don't necessarily have the same alleles. The gene, that could be like hair texture, it could be eye color, it could be having hair. All of those traits are going to be controlled by a gene. The way that they are controlled could be slightly different and that is going to be based upon the allele that is there. So the variation of the gene is the allele. Some more vocab. Homologous chromosomes, those are your pairs of chromosomes. A sexually reproducing organism has homologous pairs of chromosomes. It received one set of chromosomes from the male parent and one set of chromosomes from the female parent. And those chromosomes all have the exact same genes, but they might have different alleles. Because we have homologous chromosomes, we are referred to as being diploid. Di referring to two and the ploidy meaning the chromosome number. And so we have two of each type of chromosome. That is what it means to be diploid. Gametes are haploid, and haploid is a cell that only contains one set of chromosomes. So it doesn't have two anymore, it would only have one set of each chromosome. So if we think about it, a chromosome, strand of DNA wrapped around protein, and it's made up of genes. Those genes are going to control for specific traits, but homologous chromosomes, they have the exact same genes with the possibility of different alleles. So they have the ability to control the same traits, but it's just slightly differently. That is what gives us the variation across a species. It's just the presence of different alleles. So if you look around and you see humans looking all different ways, that's all based upon the same genes, but different alleles. And that's what gives our population all the variety and all the variation, which is really awesome. That's all based upon these slight changes in the gene, which makes a different allele. And those slight changes, where did they come from? Well, they came from mutations. That is the, how alleles actually came to be, is through little mutations. That it gives us our variations. So in summary, well, 
all organisms, remember, they all reproduce, and they're going to reproduce in one of two different ways. They're either going to reproduce sexually or they're going to reproduce asexually. And both ways of reproducing have advantages and disadvantages. Asexual reproduction makes an exact copy of its parent because that is where it got its entire complement of genes from. Sexual reproduction makes a unique new organism based upon the combination of genes from each parent. And that is how these two different ways of reproducing work. Where we're going to be going from here is looking at how gametes are made and then following how those different alleles can be passed from parent to offspring. Until next time, be awesome, stay awesome.